The wet bulb temperature is a key indicator of how likely you are to survive a heat wave. In this video, I will explain how wet bulb temperature is measured and how it can determine your survival during a heat wave. While people often complain that it's the humidity, not the heat, that is making them uncomfortable during a hot day, it is the combination of heat and humidity that tells you how dangerous the heat is to your survival. Because humans are warm-blooded animals, we must maintain our core body temperature within narrow limits to avoid serious heat-related injury. Core body temperature normally ranges from about 36.4 degrees centigrade to 36.6 degrees centigrade which corresponds to 97.5 degree Fahrenheit to 97.9 degree Fahrenheit. And skin temperature usually is slightly lower at about 35 degrees centigrade. When the ambient temperature is me as measured by an ordinary dry bulb thermometer is significantly lower than our core body temperature, we lose heat by convection to our surroundings. Air in contact with our skin is warmed, and this warm air flows to the cooler surroundings. But when the ambient temperature approaches core body temperature, we can't lose heat by convection. Instead, we begin to sweat, and we depend on that sweat evaporating to allow us to maintain our core body temperature within safe limits. This picture shows how a simple wet bulb thermometer is constructed. All it consists of is two identical mercury thermometers. The bulb of the thermometer on the right is encased in a cotton sleeve that is kept wet by a reservoir filled with distilled water. As water evaporates from the cloth encasing the bulb, it cools the thermometer on the right so it reads a lower temperature than the identical thermometer on the left. The amount by which the wet bulb thermometer reads lower than the dry bulb thermometer depends on just two factors, the dry bulb temperature and the relative humidity in percent. The formula that relates wet bulb temperature to the combination of dry bulb temperature and percent relative humidity is rather complicated, and it doesn't account for the effects of solar radiation and wind on the heat stress that the human body experiences. The wet bulb globe temperature is a measurement that's derived from the readings of three thermometers. These are a wet bulb thermometer reading and a dry bulb thermometer reading, both taken in the shade, and the reading of a dry bulb thermometer that's inside a black globe that is positioned nearby but in the sunlight. The wet bulb global temp globe temperature is a better indicator of heat stress on those working or exercising outdoors. The formula on the upper right shows how the three temperature readings are combined to get the wet bulb globe temperature. The chart shows the maximum safe working conditions in full sunlight for healthy people as a function of dry bulb temperature and percent relative humidity in the green boxes. Note that as the humidity increases, the range of maximum safe working conditions narrows rapidly. Another takeaway from this chart is that web bulb globe temperatures higher than 30 degrees centigrade or 86 degrees Fahrenheit can be lethal even for healthy people. In the shade and indoors, wet bulb globe temperatures are lower than the wet bulb temperature alone by about a degree centigrade. Thus, wet bulb temperatures of 31 degrees centigrade or 88 degrees Fahrenheit can be lethal even for healthy people. People who are elderly or who have underlying medical conditions can experience heat-related illness at wet bulb temperatures as low as 28 degrees 
centigrade or 82 degrees Fahrenheit, even in fully shaded environments. This chart summarizes the heat stress caused by both moderate and hard work by healthy individuals for ranges of wet bulb globe temperature shown. Note that both rest and water intake are needed for healthy individuals engaging in moderate or hard work to remain safe from heat injury. Keep in mind that the heat and humidity conditions that are safe for healthy people can be dangerous or even fatal for those with underlying medical conditions and for the elderly. They could experience serious heat-related injuries for wet bulb temperatures as low as 28 degrees centigrade or 82 degrees Fahrenheit. One of the consequences of climate change is the increasing frequency of dangerous daily maximum wet bulb temperatures in several parts of the world. This figure is from a paper by Raymond Matthews and Horton that was published in Science Advances in 2020. They examined weather data recorded between 1979 and 2017 to find when and where dangerous high maximum daily wet bulb temperatures were recorded. Their results showed that dangerous wet bulb temperatures in excess of 29 degrees centigrade, shown by the green dots, were being recorded in several parts of the world and potentially fatal wet bulb temperatures, shown by orange and red dots, had been recorded in several locations. In addition, when they examined the trends in the number of dangerous and potentially fatal wet bulb temperatures, they found that these numbers doubled over the 38-year period of their study. From their study, it's clear that climate change is playing a major role in the increasing frequency of these dangerous temperature and humidity conditions. Looking at the figure, we see that almost all these events are occurring in coastal regions. This is consistent with rising sea surface temperatures driven by increasing global temperatures. These rising sea surface temperatures help to create more humid conditions in the adjacent land areas. So, as global temperatures continue to rise, we can expect to see many more dangerous heat waves. Thanks for watching. I hope you have found this video informative. If you haven't done so already, I would appreciate it greatly if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click on my picture in the circle below.